Let's cut the crap on cutting the grease. Washing your car with household detergent. Just how egregious a breach of automotive etiquette is this? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. First, let us cut this crap and also the grease and the grime, and then we might detain ourselves briefly with a few recent and salty nuts. Hand-picked, of course. It could be you, but only the creme de la creme of nut de la nut actually makes it onto this fine, upstanding family program. That's all coming up. I'm thinking about hand washing my car, grey metallic, and wanted to know if using the detergent I use to wash my dirty dishes would be suitable. Unfortunately, the internet is full of dire warnings against using washing up liquid. Sounds like bullshit to me. Your thoughts? The chemistry is pretty straightforward. Detergents break down grease so that you can dissolve it in water, and they are slippery and foamy to make it fun in the hot tub with the cheerleaders, and also to help lift up surface contamination and reduce the other kind of grease, elbow grease. Because nobody likes a cheerleader with surface contamination who's also hard to work with. Speaking from bitter personal experience. You know, people commonly use liquid dishwashing detergent or laundry detergent to wash their cars and, amazingly enough, a rift in space-time does not open up and allow the four horsemen of religious nutbag apocalyptic folklore to ride on through. These products are pretty effective at cutting grease, and they have to be to get congealed saturated fat and residual bolognese sauce off the plates at home and sweaty crutch smell out of your undergarments. So I guess they're just right if you've been eating bolognese off your car or giving it a good post-workout rub with your wedding vegetables. They're the obvious choice if you're doing that. But a good safety tip there, if you are going to do both of those things, do them in that order so that you do not contravene local health regulations apropos of the preparation of food. The problem is actually, that these household detergents are a bit too effective. They're so good at cutting grease that they will probably strip away any protective wax on the paint of your mother's Corolla, leaving it subsequently exposed to environmental contamination. She's thus very likely to strike you from the will and then everything will go to your sister, whom you have always detested anyway, and nobody wants that, except, of course, sis. Environmental contamination, right? That's everything from bird shit and industrial fallout on the acid etching attack front to grit, which is often, you know, silicon dioxide, which is small and hard and sharp and thus abrasive and it causes swirl marks in the paint when you rub it off. So there's that. The wax on the paint acts as both a chemical and a physical barrier to these insidious paint attack vectors and if you strip it away, obviously... It's not going to be doing any of that protecting. Detergent attacks grease directly and the foam lifts up the abrasive particles off the paint and it helps thus minimise swirl marks. A good safety tip here is to wash from the top of the car down, the better to prevent the higher concentration of abrasive particles lower down from being lifted up. And if you want to be a real car detailing, car care Nazi. Use a second sponge for the scungier wheels and sills and all of that area down there. There is obviously a class of person who cares deeply about the appearance of their fine chariot and another class of person who really could not give a flying proverbial about that kind of thing, and a sliding scale of people somewhere in the middle. If you're kind of in the middle with, I suspect, the vast majority of us, the people who sort of care how their car looks, but they're definitely not true car care zealots, then just use a car-specific one-shot wash and wax detergent-based product. Get the car waxed twice a year and move on with your life, you know, the better to detain yourself over the stuff that really matters. 
So no, the world definitely will not end if you use household liquid detergent, but it is certainly a suboptimal car washing hack. If you are that zealot though, you can detain yourself all day long with multi-stage car primping emoluments and processes. Just knock yourself out. Polish it like a 15 year old. That's the kind of thing you enjoy. And of course, if you really do not give a shit here, then I recommend a wire brush, a scotch Bright scourer, and wash it all down with some Drano. Quite strangely, a small number of people felt compelled to apologise for the fact that Ford, Holden, Mitsubishi and Nissan paid no income tax in Australia for at least three years. John, you're an auto expert but not a tax expert. Corporations that pay little or no taxes do not mean they are tax dodgers or unethical and vice versa. There are many things that legitimately affect profitability, not necessarily due to shady accounting or cheating. All major companies hire tax experts to find ways to pay as little tax as possible. In the long run, unless there is a deliberate illegal tax evasion, everyone ends up paying their fair share. I was very surprised at the number of people expressing this sentiment. However, I'd suggest that attacking the qualifications of the commentator is a weak way to kick off. You don't need to be a tax expert at all to understand that it is manifestly unfair for an individual on 100k a year salary to pay more income tax than a corporation like Schittsville Chevy or Ford earning billions. In fact, I'd submit that if we got our fine democracy together or a representative sample in a focus group, perhaps down the pub, we could take democracy's temperature on this. And remember, corporations don't vote, people do. We could even give Schittsville Chevy's CFO or some slime bag from the FCAI 30 minutes or more on the floor to talk us all around on the inherent equity of the status quo. Good luck with that. Our fine Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull shit himself wants to detain us all endlessly with issues that really don't matter, such as gay marriage. It's a diversion. I'd just let people marry whomever or whatever they wanted. If someone wants to marry the Sydney Harbour fucking bridge, knock yourselves out. I now pronounce you man and coat hanger. Thank you. Now, can we finally get on with fixing the issues that really do matter to ordinary shits villains? You are a stupid individual. Hydrogen is not the lightest gas in the universe. There is one more helium dumb fuck. I did scour all of the chemical literature and although there are nine isotopes of helium, none of them are called helium dumb fuck. In point of fact, helium gas is twice as heavy as hydrogen gas, inconveniently. The molecular weight of helium is four. For hydrogen, it's two. If you doubt me on this, and it is pretty basic high school chemistry, just go to Google and type in, what's the lightest gas? You know, you are kind of entitled to your own opinion on some epistemically ambiguous things, chocolate versus strawberry, you know, blondes, brunettes. You are not, however, entitled to your own facts. Love the Barnaby jab. Keep the bastards honest. I'm pretty sure Barnaby enjoys a jab too. Ultimately, I mean, he got paid 150 grand for having one. For those of you who know nothing of Schittsvillian politics, Barnaby Joyce is the former Deputy Prime Minister of our fine South Pacific shithole. He is, in fact, a genetically modified beetroot in a ridiculous hat who fell over accidentally in the shower one day and landed inside one of his ministerial aides. There's no nice way to put this. A child ensued, and sadly he lost the big gig as Turnbull Shit Sixers arse liquor in chief. And ultimately, he sold his story to the trashy media for 150 big ones. It's a modern adaptation, of course, of Samuel Taylor Coleridge's immortal classic, Rhyme of the Ancient Marinated, with screenplay, I guess, by Lewis Black. 
It all sounds like a fairly tacky, low rent and ethically bankrupt thing for a sitting member of parliament to do mainly because that's exactly what it is. Personal opinion. And I guess he wonders why everyone now calls him the beetrooter. <laughs> Search hashtag the beetrooter on Twitter and you will see exactly what I mean. How would you like to have your loved one's cemetery monument used like this? Mr. Fun is talking about this scene from my recent Hyundai i30N review. Cemetery monument. I mean, it's called a grave. To answer your question, when my loved ones depart this mortal coil, I expect them to be with Jesus and Allah and Thor and Zeus, which is to say that they won't exist, except in my memory. How is my use of this grave any different to the many and varied uses of cemeteries in Hollywood? As long as the site was not damaged, and I assure you it was not, I'm sure the only people directly affected really were not in a position to give a shit. Would rather push me, Commodore, than get a lift with you, Bali, fat and shook. I'll buy whatever I like. New Commo is sweet. Agreed. Totally. Well, almost. Certainly, instead of getting a lift with me, I too would prefer you to push your fine Commodore, preferably over a cliff into the Great Southern Ocean, the better to emulate the sales performance and public popularity of the new French-owned, German-made Schittsville Chevy flagship faux pas. Yes. The new Holden Commodore is a dog which has absolutely bombed, even worse than I thought it ever would. They should have retired the Commodore nameplate with the VF2, the better to give it a respectful burial in place of this undignified lingering death. Football, meat pies, kangaroos, and shooting yourselves in the foot. The Schittsville Chevy way. Yes. What does Ken Ham to do with Subaru Imprezas? And there is nothing wrong with a Toyota Corolla. Honestly, you are just a bell end. Bell end, really. <laughs> I think he's talking about you, old mate. You know that you mean much more to me than that. Anyway, Corolla, most boring popular car in the universe. A lot of people want a boring, uninspiring car with the approximate personality of the second fridge in the laundry, of course. And if that's you, knock yourself out. Oh, what a feeling. Ken Ham, Schittsville's worst export ever by a country mile. Worse even than Shane Warne. Leader of the creationist fucktard cult in... Kentucky, retardistan, emblematic of people who refuse to look at the facts because the Bible tells them so. Anytime I need an example of why it is dangerous to ignore the facts, Ken Ham is my go-to guy. The obvious choice. Mr. Ham is a former school principal, terrifyingly enough, who says the world is just 6,000 years old. Actual scientifically proven age... 4.6 billion years. So there's that. Hashtag FFS. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Monday morning's generally so hard. Few nuts might lighten your load. Thanks for watching. <laughs>